Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. So a while ago, I would actually wanted to make this video, but things got so busy at work and then the holidays happened. Um, but this video is in reaction to um, an interaction I had with Working Stiff USA. They're another channel here on YouTube. They do really great work. I'll post their link in their socials down below. Please go follow them. And the nature of this conversation was thus. <clears throat> the powers that be love it when we lose all hope and go so full doomer that we become apathetic. At that point, we no longer pose a threat to the establishment. Sometimes we may have to carry the torch of hope for each other, but please, please, let's never let it burn out. And I responded saying, you know, ma'am, I have been fueled by rage at the system since I was 10 and I'm still hopefully you know, still hopeful over 30 years later. And so she responded with, you should give lessons to some people on twitter.com then, haha. -ha. So that's what this is. So how do we keep going, right? How do you keep energy for what may end up be a lifelong fight for something you believe in? It could be one cause, like, you know, you're really into you know, legalizing marijuana, or you just really deeply believe in climate justice, or you want to see UN drip implementation across the world. Like, you know, I want more recycled plastics, whatever, you know, the one issue or the myriad of issues are, how do we make sure we don't lose energy and focus and remain healthy while we try and do this? So I guess this means I have to actually get very personal in a video. <clears throat> um, so my radicalization story begins when I'm 10 years old under the PC government of Mike Harris here in Ontario. And at that time, because, you know, money, we got to make cuts. They were trying to basically all but get rid of the French immersion program. I was in the French immersion program because of, I've mentioned a few times Part of my family is French Canadian. And so it just kind of makes sense to be able to speak the both official languages of the country you are born and raised in. So, you know, when you're 10 years old, just trying to live your life and do well at school and spend time with your friends and come home and, you know, spend time with your family, hearing for the first time, oh, sorry, you know, Mom has got to go to school trustee meetings or, you know, interviews and stuff to fight for your school and other schools like yours not to close and to save this program. And, you know, that, of course, naturally spurs questions of, well, wait, why would people want to close these programs? And so early on, you know, I got this, like, you know, shocking immediate exposure to uh, politics and the world around me. And it's what made me realize that there are people out there who I don't know, who don't give, you know, a damn about me and lots of other people because of their ideology, their perception, their beliefs. And if I don't fight for my rights, they will be happy to take those away from me or from other people. And I began to understand this, not fully, like, you know, it's not like I had suddenly started reading theory, but I began to understand the world of politics and the world around me at 10 years old, which is a very early and not nice way to be radicalized. And, you know, like, sure, it was like, you know, a kid's level of radicalization of I don't want to have to go to school and, and make new friends. What about my friends and the current system? And like, we're already doing work. And like, what does that mean for report cards? Do I have to repeat another year and all these other scary kid based questions? Right. But the initial learning process was there. And that's where this all starts and why I still to this day advocate for the rights of minorities and try and do all these sort of advocacy donations, raise money, fundraising, etc. It's also a big part of why I joined um, the Air Cadets back in the day. I like the idea of learning new things, being able to make new friends, being able to fly and do some other cool stuff like shoot guns for the first time, um, help out in you know your local community. I, I liked these things and I had done some of this beforehand. So that's just a very broad stroke sort of summation of where I come from. 
And of course, over all those years between the school um, and that whole crisis in education and growing up and getting more politically aware and engaged and then volunteering with parties and candidates, you know, municipally, federally, provincially. My story is long and it means that there's a lot of causes and issue that I have, you know, become aware of. And it's also part of why I made this channel to just air my grievances about things because there's so many. And yet I've uploaded every day since starting this. And every day, whether I post it or not, there's something that I come across that bothers me or infuriates me. And so it's like, how do you make this so that you don't burn yourself out? And the first thing is it's important to recognize when you're getting to that point and to take a break. Lots of other YouTubers do this. Um, for me, it came in the form of just like most recently pre-recording all these Christmas videos Find a way to take a break. Give yourself time to rest, recuperate, and breathe. And then in terms of what keeps you going, even if it's just at the end of the day, one core issue, just have something that is so crucial to who you are as a person, your worldview, what you believe justice to be. And remember, why you're doing that. I don't know what Abby's is. That'll be for her to tell you over on her channel or on Twitter. Um, I don't know what it is for Bo the fifth column. Ask him next time he's doing a live stream. But everyone needs to find something core for them, even if it's just a concept, you know, like equality, justice, freedom, liberty even if it's just an idea if that can be your fuel that you can use through thick and thin then you're going to be golden forever you're going to have your days where you struggle days where you're going to need to do something more lighthearted or not do anything at all take a break put down the phone like not go on the internet for a while read a book go for a walk go on a hike go to like one of those break rooms and break some stuff Recognize when you're starting to get to the point of being able to burn out and pull back from that and never lose sight of what it is that motivated you to become a leftist, a progressive, you know, someone who champions justice, freedom, equality, whatever it is that motivates you that doesn't have to do with outside forces, right? So it doesn't depend on, oh, I need someone's support in order to do this. Whatever the core idea is, never lose sight of that because that's what's going to get you through, you know, anywhere from 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 plus years on this bitch of an earth, never losing sight of what's important to you and the justices the, and uh, the causes that you believe in. I know things seem dark and many times they are. There are many times where you're going to fight for something and you're going to lose and losing sucks. And in a nation like America, where everything is treated like a game, you know, politics is a game in America, even though it shouldn't be. And so when you have so many people around you who will happily laugh or exploit your setback it's important to never stop fighting if people stopped fighting then we'd still be stuck in the dark ages with worse systems feudalism a lack of equality for women and of course we still have work to make on that issue right so the struggle and the fight never stops which is why it's important to Take breaks and breathers when you can, and also to never lose sight of what motivates you, what gets you up in the morning. And, you know, th this also touches on mental health and um, suicidal thoughts and things like that, but you can live for a variety of reasons. You can live for yourself. You can live 
for others. You can live for your animal or an idea. You can live for your kids. You, you can you can live just to spite someone, you know? It's like, huh, kill myself. I'd never give you the satisfaction. Like, there are so many different ways in which, you know, depending on our personality, our thought processes, anything like that, there are so many ways in which we can find avenues for our own continued survival and mental health. And if you are struggling and if you need help, reach out to people. There's plenty of, you know, phone lines, there's services, there's mutual aid networks, which again, go follow Abby for the people in Working Stiff USA. They got some great info on that. I know it's hard to see light at the end of the tunnel, especially these days between the pandemic and the current state of affairs in America and the world, but that doesn't mean the fight should stop. If you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, and if you stop walking down that path, then you're just going to be stuck in the darkness forever. There's no chance of hope or marching forward until eventually you do see the light. That's something that often gets forgotten about. You know, oh, we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. It looks dark. It looks hopeless. Humanity's been through things like that before, which is why it's important that we recognize this and have, you know, our communities, our friends, our families close and safe and happy and as healthy as possible. And the fact that there are some people out there who, you know, still aren't sure if the fight is still worth it when it's really all we got in this life. That's what upsets me a lot of the time and it's what's bothering me today.